The year is 1999. Yes, I am that old. That was my very last basketball game at St. John's. And I looked over at my friend Alex and I said, Alex, our sports career is pretty much done. I didn't expect to go to the NBA. I wasn't going to the NFL. So I thought now was the perfect time to start working out. And ever since that day in the locker room, I said, let's start working out. I haven't really missed a day. Honestly, I can remember from 1999 until today, which is 2023, I missed one month and I wish I never really took that month off. But today I wanna tell you the seven things I wish I knew when I first started my fitness journey. So number one is that back in the day, the only thing really available for us to see were these magazines. And in these magazines was like Ronnie Coleman, Arnie Schwarzenegger, like all these huge animals of men. But when I was 17, 18, 19, I thought that was the ultimate goal. And so looking at it now and understanding everything that I understand now, those bodies are unattainable. Those guys take weightlifting and strength training to the extreme. It'd be like looking at a magazine of Djokovic and saying, that's exactly where I gotta be right now. I gotta be playing pro, I gotta win Wimbledon, but now it's all about the muscle. And then I thought that was achievable within a short period of time. But now I understand that there's a lot of hard work. There's a lot of crazy supplementation that has to happen. That's a whole nother beast of an animal. Number two is that supplements are only supplements to your hard work and diet. Back then, there was like a return policy at uh, one of the, the big chains of supplement stores. And I used to take every single supplement known to man. I didn't know what I was taking, but every second week I was buying a new supplement and I was trying it. And I thought that these supplements would help me to look like Arnie almost instantly. But what I didn't know is that instead of spending time investing and learning about supplements and taking supplements, I should have invested more in mentors or coaches and spent more time working at the body and my diet versus just trying to swallow some powders and pills. So supplements I thought were gonna give me the fast track to getting results, but over time I realized that hard work, consistency, and diet are the key answers. I also learned that you need to train smarter, not harder. So let's fast forward about five or six years, and I used to think that if I spent two hours at the gym and I did the hardest exercises in the world, that by stringing those all together, I would get that body that I was looking to achieve, like in those magazines. But I soon realized that training harder, and especially without recovering faster, only led to injuries. I remember I had like injuries that I would work through, and I was like, okay, well, the, the answer to this is to not scale it back and spend time in recovery, but to scale it up and to work harder. And by working harder, it actually made the injuries last longer. And I still feel those injuries 10, 20 years ago, I still feel them today. And so training harder versus training smarter is that you should always train smarter. Now, I only do 30 minutes. I do one class five to six days a week. And honestly, that's what my body loves. As you can see, I'm in peak condition in my 40s. And it's not because I'm training harder. It's because I'm training smarter. I also learned that we need to focus on the long run versus wanting it all right now. So training longer at the gym, training harder at the gym, taking more supplements, I thought that that was gonna get me to exactly where I needed to be and I had to be where I wanted to be right then and there. But now I've learned that this is a journey that's gonna be with me forever. So I might not have the results that I wanted at that time, but they're eventually going to come. And the results, that I have now into my 40s, they just didn't happen within a matter of months or years. They've happened over the course of decades. And so looking at it now in my 40s, I'm like, imagine where I'm gonna be if I keep up this consistent routine into my 50s and into my 60s, into my 70s, and hopefully into my 80s, 90s, and my 100s. Imagine where I'll be if I continue to get smarter, train better, continue with my nutrition, and just taking care of my body so that I have longevity. It's gonna be an amazing future for myself if I continue to invest in myself. And speaking of investment, I wish I would have invested in prehab tools and prehab therapy. So prehab tools are things like heat packs, 
ice packs and taking joint supplements. Prehab therapy is like getting massages frequently, chiropractic treatment, physiotherapy. Back then, my answers were to just work through it and work harder, but now I understand that getting these treatments are all a part of the process. In fact, they're gonna help to lengthen things that need to get lengthened. They're gonna help to realign things that you need realigned. They're also going to bring in nourishment to certain body parts that create recovery because if you work hard, you have to recover hard and that's the only way that you're gonna get long-term results. And last but not least, I need to continue to learn. I need to continue to explore and invest time in educating myself and how I can nourish my body and how I can make sure that I have the longevity that I'm looking for, pushing myself as hard as I can, but at the same time recovering and recuperating more so that I can actually give my all without sustaining an injury. So there we have it guys, that's the seven things that my 40 year old self would have told my 17 year old self when I just started my fitness journey. Now in the comments section, I wanna know what is your thing that you wish you would have told your 17 year old self that they can learn from and continue to grow through until they get to be your age.